skin. It's stretchy, it's the largest organ on the body, and it's something that requires upkeep constantly. That's how you're opening? Well, skin is like leather, they both need upkeep and moisturizing. But it sounds like Silence of the Lambs. It's creepy. No, why would we want to equate to a Just to like a leather and then No, no, like... that's even worse. No, I don't understand why because... you want to... <clears throat> Are we starting soon? Who the f*** you? <laughs> you? You said you were doing a boot black episode, so I just figured I'd drop by. Oh, oh. that's right. I mean, if you don't mind sitting in. Uh, sure, I've got nothing else going on. Great. Roll the opening. Hello, and welcome back to What's Safe Word. I'm Amp. I'm Mr. Christopher. I'm Buck. And today we are talking about boot blacking, the ancient pastime that goes back centuries in the kink community that not only keeps us all held together, but keeps us looking sexy. So today we have a resident boot black and expert boot blacker, Buck. Buck, welcome to the show. Can you please tell everyone who you are, what you do, and what brought you to the community? Hi everyone, my name is Buck. I'm your friendly neighborhood boot black. Were you bitten by a boot too? Or like, <laughs> what's your no, origin that's, story? That's that's a wear boot. A wear boot? I wear boots all the time, but. <laughs> God, this is starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so I have been boot blacking for uh, about 13, 14 years now. And I first uh, got started when I saw my first uh, real boot blacking experience at a uh, leather bar. I expressed interest in learning how to do it. And my dom at the time just went, oh, cool, you've got two weeks to learn because you're going to start in the bar soon. <laughs> so I had to learn quick. Would you say you had to put your boots to the ground? I had to put my soul into it. Wow. Mm. That, this show's gonna be laced with puns, and that's that's fine by me. <laughs> you gonna a, be okay, Daddy? No. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already out. <laughs> I, I think it's fair to say he'll be in stitches by the time we're done. Oh, God. Before we really get into it, though, I'm curious, where did the term boot black come from? Like, what's the etymology or, like, the first rendition of boot blacking in our history? The term is simply just literally working on black boots. Shoe shines have been, you know, documented to have been around since the 1800s. The first picture of a shoe shine is from like the early 1800s, I believe. The first documented evidence of um, essentially fetishized or kink would be um, Hannah Colwick from the mid to late 1800s. Oh, we've talked about her on a podcast before. And I will say while fetish history is generally not very well documented until you get <laughs> into our century, she did have actual diaries where she wrote down her experiences with her master who she served at the time, if I'm not correct. And she's documented as saying, you know, she would know where her master's been based on the taste of his boots. So let's say I have some boots. Could you tell me where they've been? Uh, I might be able to tell you which bar you've been at, you dirty oh, man. Oh, 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 oh okay. wow. So today's episode's gonna be all about boot blacking, leather care, and the questions that people don't generally get a chance to ask when they're sitting in a chair and they're getting their boots blacked. They're all questions from you guys that you asked on Twitter. So we put this post up. And our first question came from Brad Venture, who just tagged Buck. A lot of people tagged you. Do when you get I tagged asked. a lot? <laughs> um, I, I, I got a few tags and I got a lot of private messages. Oh, you were DM. You were getting tag teamed, it sounds like. Also, that wasn't a question, Brad. We had already planned to have him here, so stop ruining the magic. For real though, our first question comes from Pup Sticker, who asks, how would you recommend getting started for someone who is newer? Do you have a preference for certain products? How do you get started in boot blacking? Well, you start with a pair of boots, which um, I didn't actually bring any. I've got some, and this isn't a self-serving episode for me whatsoever, but oh my God, here, look, there's some boots for you to Wait, work on. There why you... is he gonna no, do it... your boots and not mine? We're, we're showing- I have more boots. Boots, boots too. That's fair, and mine need boot blacking before we go to Darklands, because- <laughs> A lot of uh, boot blacking knowledge is essentially pretty community driven. So uh, I've been running a boot black educational TikTok for about a year and a half, two years now. So uh, you can find me there at Buck Harder. Oh, you'd think a pup would take better care of their paws, but you would. <laughs> Damn! Ooh, you were just dished. Answer the question, Claire. <laughs> So essentially there's a lot of online resources that are available now. Uh, one really good website is anyonecanshine.com. Uh, that's one of the ones that I first started using uh, that breaks down different products, different techniques, uh, and even goes into some more advanced techniques like re and that kind of thing. But if you're just starting, they have some great information. Facebook and FetLife both have really, really great boot blacking groups that people are more than happy to answer questions. As well, actually, I brought a book with me. Uh, this is Beyond Boot Blacking by Daddy Wendell, 
Um, so this is a really, really great book, easily found on Amazon, and it's really affordable. Nice. Um, and they, again, this is a book where they break down different products, different techniques. As far as favorite products, um, you're essentially looking at three different types of products. You've got uh, cleaners, polishes, and conditioners. Um, there's other products beyond that, but those are going to be the main ones that you're looking at. For cleaners, plain glycerin soap. Uh, Neutrogena makes a really good facial cleanser bar that works really well. As far as conditioner, uh, my favorite go-to is Hubert's or Hubbard's, which is a fan favorite for a lot of boot blocks. Uh, Obanoff's is another really good one. And for polishes, I would recommend Lincoln or Angelus. Those hmm. are both really, really good brands. Hubbard's, didn't he start Scientology? That was L. Ron Hobart. Oh, next, okay, next question, next question. <laughs> So actually, do you mind if I just start working on your boot right now? Not at all. And while you do that, I'll go ahead and get to the next question. And this one comes from Blue Beagle Pup, who says, what's the difference between a boot black and a shoe shiner? Ooh, that's a really good question. I would say the big difference is intent. Um, a shoe shine, it's a lot more about the end result, and that's kind of where it begins and ends for the most part. Boot blacks are, the, the way I refer to it is, a boot black is kind of the intersection between someone who does shoe shining and someone who is actually involved in leather. So there's that attachment to the gear, there's the sentimental value attached to it, there's the potential to actually create a scene while they're working, um, that kind of thing. So it's a lot more about the intent and motivation as opposed to the, the, the actual product that you're working on. I like having a scene. I love it. And we'll get into some scene questions, but I think this next one's especially important as you start cleaning. And it comes from Kai Modius who asks, do boot blacks prefer to be brought cleaner or dirtier boots? And I'm honestly curious as well. My preference is the ones that need a lot of work. I, I really like the transformative aspect when you start with something that looks really dirty and mucky and needs a lot of work. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> Love it. the thing to keep in mind is just make sure that whatever you bring the boot black is reasonable. If they're working at a bar or an event and you know that you have leather that's gonna take like two hours to get through, that's more of a take home project situation. Some boot blacks work exclusively at events. Some boot blacks work exclusively out of their home and take home projects. Oh, I didn't know that. So the important thing is to make sure that you actually just initiate that conversation with the boot black in mind, just to make sure that you're all on the same page. This next question applies kind of nicely to what you're doing currently because you're using what looks like a, a pervertible of some sort. And it comes from Divic Pup who asks, how would one source boot blacking essentials for not too much money? Because I see multiple products here, but I also see things like hankies and toothbrushes. Like what are some of your favorite things to do that aren't gonna cost an arm and a leg? My leg! One of the things to kind of keep in mind is just like any craft, there is going to be an expenditure involved just to get the tools of your craft but you can save money in a lot of different ways. Honestly, with regards to uh, cleaning products, like I mentioned, you don't need to get really fancy soaps. You can get like Neutrogena, which I think is costs about $4 a bar, which isn't too bad. Um, any of the cloths and uh, cleaning rags, um, hankies, if you have old t-shirts that you're not wearing anymore, you can cut those up for rags. I have two or three toothbrushes in my kit to clean the welt, which is the, the portion of the bottom of the boot. Every time you go to the dentist, do you just take a handful of those free toothbrushes? Yes. That's what I do too. <laughs> and I don't do boot black. <laughs> I just like free toothbrushes. You just like free stuff. I do. <laughs> just make sure you don't confuse your toothbrushes. But <laughs> if you use charcoal toothpaste. <laughs> oh my. It just, the taste is a little off. It just, it doesn't work quite the same. So I use a toothbrush to clean the more hard to reach spots and I wipe off the excess suds and whatnot with, this is just a hanky, um, which you can get pretty cheap and easily. And a great way to flag too, if you're boot blacking at an event, because as you can imagine, as people get boot blacking done, mm -hmm. conversations happen. It's almost like a little therapy session in a way, but also very much a cruising session sometimes too. Oh, completely. I, I um, in my mind, I relate this a lot to like going to the salon. To the salon! So uh. it's like, it's a pampering self-care experience for a lot of guys. That makes sense. But hold on a second, before we get into today's episode, I want to thank today's sponsor, Joy Mode, because while boot black health is really important, so is your sexual health. And again, Joy Mode is here to sponsor the day because over-the-counter boner pills are a thing of the past. I've done plenty of boner pills over the counter or at a gas station that end up giving me heartburn that's worse than the pizza that we had last week. 
Can we throw that out, by the way? From unnecessary erections that last longer than they should to unnecessary hospital visits that I've seen friends go to because they were doing some erotic photo shoots and video shoots of the adult variety. So that's where Joy Mode's all natural sexual performance booster comes in. With a drink that's not only gonna make you feel good, but gonna help you feel even better in the bedroom. Simply mix this wonderful concoction with six to eight ounces of water, 45 minutes before any sexual activity, and watch the magic unfold, literally. It's like a pre-workout, but for sex. You're gonna shake it up, chug, and not only is it going to help you in the bedroom, but it's gonna help with blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, and general erection function, to say the least. So stop relying on those little blue pills or trying over-counter subscriptions that cost a little too much, because you can just buy a bag of Joy Modes, travel very easily with it, try it out, and you're good to go. So check out Joy Mode at usejoymode.com slash watts20 to get 20% off and free shipping on your order from Joy Mode. Try it on us and maybe help yourself in the bedroom. Thank you, Joy Mode. Now on to the boots, the house down, Joy Mode for your performance. Mama, work the world tour. But this next question is something you can even ask your own boot black as you're getting your stuff cleaned. It comes from Banjo who asks, what are some fun ways to sub for a boot black? Because while boot black is very surface oriented, that doesn't mean they're bottoms. Can I answer this one? <laughs> what? Okay, go. I once sat for him while he did my boots and he may have humiliated me a bit by and then brushing them with certain oh. other things. Oh. Well, without breaking TOS, what are some other fun ways that people can <laughs> sub for you as you are maybe doing their boots or doing something else? Uh, so I will say it's it's very similar to uh, navigating negotiation for any other kind of scene. If you are sitting for a boot black and you want to sub to them in that moment, the first thing that you would need to do is just make sure you let them know, right? Just actually outright ne negotiate that, either beforehand or as you're sitting for them, that kind of thing. And the really great thing about a boot black kit is it is filled with convertibles. <laughs> We toothbrush. Do, we, we yeah, love the toothbrush. <laughs> um, the, the soap brush that I use works really great as a um, impact play toy. Uh, and here's the really fun thing is, um, so as, as you alluded to, just because someone is a boot black doesn't mean that they're a bottom, doesn't mean that they're submissive. Either way, you are positioned typically between the person's legs and you have access to a lot of really fun bits both from the dom and the sub perspective. But also like they have control over your gear and making it look nice. Be nice to your freaking boot blacks. Like, yeah, you can get fun and sexy humiliation play or even dom sub dynamics, but that doesn't fit every boot blacker or every scene. Yeah. And so I, I thank you first and foremost, like to you, but also to our boot blacking community for keeping, literally keeping us held together and looking shiny and pretty and beautiful. We help make sure you get laid. It's true. <laughs> and sometimes in the chair. <laughs> next question though. This next one, while not really a question, is a wonderful point that I love to bring up. And it comes from Jinxed Jockalope who asks, or more so states, this isn't a question, but more of a reminder that people can bring any leathers and sometimes latex, and don't forget the tip. Boot blacks are stewards of the leather community and tips help us replenish our supplies. He's polishing the tip right now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working the tip as we speak. Well, that brings up a good question of like, you can bring many things to boot blacks, different kinds of boots. I'm curious, have you ever gotten, like what's the weirdest thing you've ever gotten as a follow-up? Uh, fish leather boots. My leg! Fish leather? Was Ariel your client? <laughs> <laughs> And did you have to scale how much you charge them? Oh God, I'm, I'm hooked on these jokes. Oh God. Typically the main thing to keep in mind is so long as it's leather, most boot blacks can work on whatever it might be. But you will definitely have more of a varied type of, of gear to work on from like rubber, to, uh, suede to uh, neoprene, that kind of thing. Um, all of those requires different levels of care and different boot blacks have different areas of specialization. So if you have something that's not necessarily just leather, or if you have a weird request, that is definitely something to negotiate with the boot black ahead of time, hmm. as opposed to sitting for them, just expecting them to be able to do it. Are there different kinds of boots that you generally get more often than not? Like, so this is just a, a basic, what, black leather? What kind of leather would you say that is? Uh, so essentially it comes down to, you have high shine and you have oil tan. Hmm. Um, and that will affect how you actually care for the leather in the first place. Um, not all leather, it's not recommended that all leather gets polish. Is um, that what that is right there, this, polish? That's what this is here. So this is this is the Lincoln polish that I was talking about. Um, and you can get polish in a whole bunch of different colors, but typically 
black is what you're gonna see. And high shine is leather that is, once you've cleaned it, it's a lot smoother. Um, and it's a kind of leather finish that will take a polish that will, that it, it'll just look better once it's polished. Other leather, if you think garment leather, where it's more matte, where it looks more like actual skin, that is oil tan leather. And typically that is conditioned as opposed to polished. So that is when you would break out your, your Hubert's or other form of leather conditioner as opposed to it being polished. Okay, is it Hubert's or Hubbard's? Because I... <laughs> okay. It so, depends on if you're a Scientologist. Most, most boot blacks refer to it as Hubbard's. The official pronunciation is Hubert's. And, and in my head, I usually refer to it as Hububert's just because both hit in my head. <laughs> oh, like Gif and Jif. Uh, no, that only has that one way of pronouncing it. Yeah. And the yeah. right way to say it is... Yeah. Jif. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Love it. Actually, when we talk about cleaning and polishing and leather, this next one comes from Unworthy Slut Boy, who asks, what leather conditioners are safe for oral worship after a cleaning? Oh. Okay. Hubert's is primarily pine tar and beeswax. It is technically non-toxic. It is safe to lick unless you have specific allergies. Do not make a meal out of it. <laughs> Uh, that sounded very pointed. <laughs> have you had experiences? Have you had any bad I've heard reactions? Of. Oh, I've really? Heard of, yeah. Just be careful what you put in your body. We all put terrible things in there within moderation. Don't be stupid, stupid. Yeah. You know, um, practice but... risk aware boot blacking, basically. <laughs> -aware. So the only ones that I would say it would be safe to really. Um, Lake would be Hubert's and Open House. Those are the only two that really I would do. So question for you. Yeah. What is the toughest thing you've ever worked on? So, uh, years ago, I was still a baby boot black with maybe three years under my belt. I was at a uh, pansexual kink event. It was a pansexual play event. And I was there alongside another boot black and someone comes up to me and says, before you even look down, I will perfectly be happy to accept uh, no to not doing these boots. <laughs> Oh, this is a perfect setup. <laughs> so I just sort of like, okay. And I looked down and they were caked with mud from a camping trip three years ago. Oh God. Oh no. Disgusting! He had, <laughs> so tip your boot blacks. <laughs> he had $80 sticking out of the boots that he said, this is just for you for even looking at them. I will tip you after. I'm like, wow. Cool. That's good. That's good oh, client I, etiquette, I would say. So did, you, <laughs> did you pull out your chisel? <laughs> I almost had to. So keeping in mind, I was a lot less experienced then than I am now. Um, but at the time, I think it took me about two, two and a half hours to do that one pair of boots. Wow. Uh, I was very proud of the fact that I got them to be shiny at the end of it and actually clean. Which is a great segue into the next question that has to do with shining, and it comes from Thunder My Lullaby, who asked, "Can spit actually be good for the leather of the boots, or is that just aesthetic?" I'm helping. <laughs> um, well, my spit it out. <laughs> I I think that uh, when you are polishing, spit is actually a good thing. The main thing behind it is the moisture actually helps the polish do its job. And spit is the thing that's the most readily available. And how long does the, the shining with a little bit of spit take for you? It depends on how much of a shine you want to get. I've had a boot black session last 10, 15 minutes I, and I get a decent shine out of that. Uh, I have had some take home projects that took me hours, but I got close to a mirror shine at the end. Wow. Like you can actually see yourself in the boot. Yes. I see. <laughs> You're so vain, you probably think this boot is about you. This next question from Puppy Doll asks, Always been curious on how serious boot blacking slash leather care is for your gear, and what are the consequences of not conditioning your leather versus the benefits of doing it? What happens if you don't condition the leather? What happens if you don't moisturize? <laughs> I love a question answer with another question. That's so unhelpful. <laughs> um, the thing to keep in mind is you are working with animal skin. Ultimately, that, that's what we're working on. If you don't moisturize it, it will dry out. I have a question. Yes, you. So, uh, can you, is it just defined to boots or can I have other leathers cleaned by a boot black? Actually, that's a great segue into this next question that says, My boot black friends love cleaning sneakers and not very many people know that they can do them. I'm curious with this question, like what are some more interesting things people could bring you? Do people bring you like high heels? Do they bring you like some platform Crocs? Like what are those? 
What what is the what's the line? Please don't bring platform crocs. I would love to see someone get some platform no, crocs. No, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Again, baseline. If it's leather, most boot blacks will be able to help you out. I have worked on sneakers and high tops before. I have had multiple drag queens sit for me and have me do either their their high heeled shoes or um, uh, dominatrix boots. Ooh. Yeah. Like I have a sling that is covered in Crisco, and I don't know how to get it off. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's something that I can, I wouldn't work on a sling at the bar. Oh, I know what you're doing tonight. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and as we're getting to the tail end or the toe end of the boot here, I think another really good question to ask is like, where do you find boot blacks? And this question from Gronk says, where do you find spaces to be a boot black? So where can people find you? Um, so if you've been following along at home, um, I am done with the clean and the polish at this point. So unless there's anything specific that they would want me to do, I, the next step would just be to lace the boot back up. For me personally, I actually work at a bar in Palm Springs. Uh, I work at the barracks for the Sunday beer bust. Um, come see me, it's a lot of fun. And so many bars have beer busts with generally a few different boot blacks that are in rotation at that bar. Mm -hmm. If you are a boot black looking for a space to work, I would look at not just the bars and those kinds of venues in your area, but find out if there's kink events. I've, I've heard of boot blacks literally just working a munch. I've heard of boot blacks just doing um, social events or, or that kind of thing. You don't need to work in a bar. So I love getting my boots shined at an event because not only is it practical because I get my boots shined and I'm not good at doing it myself, but I also get to sit there and sometimes smoke a cigar and I really get off on getting my feet serviced. Which is a wonderful segue to talk about events that exist as well, where you can not only be a boot black, but you can get things boot black. Like what events exist for working or getting your blacked on? Yeah, no, absolutely. There's there's some really good events that make sure that the boot blacks are really well taken care of, for sure. One that comes to mind that's actually coming up in May is the Northwest Leather Celebration, happens in Sacramento. There's also Claw, both the LA and the original Cleveland uh, have a really, really good uh, boot black contingent. There are a lot of events that are really good um, experiences for boot blacks to work at. The next question from Tat is kind of dark, actually. Um, and asks, how do you tell a customer when it's time to retire their beloved pair of boots and invest on something new? Oh, she passed away? Oh. Um, All right. Essentially, it comes down to how far gone the leather looks, really. I, I am very much of the opinion that a skilled boot black can bring most things back, but if the leather is literally falling apart, conditioning will only go so far. House down boots. Yeah, yeah. The, the house is falling down with the boots. Yes. And last but not least, I think this is one of the most important questions and it comes from Kinky Alt who asks, what is a proper or common or expected tipping amount? Without even hearing your answer, tip your boot blacks. How much is recommended? This, this is the answer that I give typically, keeping in mind that I boot black in the United States. To my understanding, Europe is a little bit different how they, they navigate that. Your average tip is typically about $20, give or take. I'm typically comfortable with however much people are comfortable tipping. My reason for that is because I don't want the price to be a barrier from someone experiencing that at a bar or at an event. For me, that's part of the leather experience. Take home projects are different. So is that $20 on top of the fee or is that for the whole shine? Typically, most boot blacks do not charge. Mm. $20 tip is appropriate. Gotcha. Is what it comes down to. It looks like that boot's nicely polished. So it looks you good. Much. You're going to look so good with just one boot on at Dark Lens. Okay. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> as we get to the tail end here, thank you again, Buck, for coming on, giving us not only your expertise, but helping us get a little polish on. And of course, no episode would be complete without a safe word, and today's safe word is... Lacing, because it ties everything together. Aww, how appropriate. And while this episode was laced with not only some information and fun, I hope that you guys enjoyed this boot blacking special, especially with our special guest. Say special one more time. Special one more time. I guess I asked for that. <laughs> if you guys have more questions for us or for Buck, you guys can do that in the comments down below. And if you like ringing bells, ring that bell down below. But don't forget to subscribe to us as well as, Buck, where can people find you if they have more questions for you specifically? Primarily, I can be found on TikTok under at Buck Harder. How much harder? As hard as you want it. Regardless of where you're following us though, thank you so much for watching today's episode and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. When you went down for the boot, did you do like a dip or? I did a dip once, but never again. It's the dip of 1987. Got the bite of 1987. <laughs> Mother Hubbard lived in a cupboard. Oh Jesus. Eating her pumpkin pie.